what up game dev gangsteronio now we have our level it is prepared so if i were to hit the play button look what is happening so basically we are somewhere here and we can float and what the hell is this and if i you know eject myself we are going to see that our character is this you know sphere whatever this is so what the hell is going on well, first things first, the or where we are spawned is determined by this over here, the player start. And we have this, you see this player start over here, so it's this bad boy. And when you create a new level, this is created by default and all of that good stuff. So what we are going to do is we are going to, let me just see where the start wall is, it's over there. So I'm going to take the player start and I am going to move it way over here where the starting point of the level is. So this is where my player is going to be spawned. So if I were to hit the play button, this is where we're going to be spawned. But again, we are floating and all of the good stuff. And this is, or the reason for this is because we have this default pawn player. And what the hell is that teacher? Well, for that, we need to go here inside. Well, not the editor preferences, but it's under edit and then project settings. And I'm going to place this over here, actually move the gameplay over here. So when we go into the project settings here in the project, we have something called maps and modes. And over here, you will see that we have this default game mode. So the game mode is basically, think of it like a controller for a specific level. You can have a global game mode that is for every single level, but you can also have, you know, game modes for every level and think of it as a controller. He will determine who is going to be spawned as the character, which is this over here. He will also determine the HUD that can be spawned. He will determine who is the player controller or basically the blueprint or the class that we're using to control the movement of the player and so on and so forth. So at the moment we have this over here, this default pawn is the one that is being spawned when we run the game that's why we see that's why we see that sphere so if i hit the play button if i eject myself this is that default pawn that's why if i possess him and i try to move we're basically floating and all of this good stuff so this is what you see essentially this is what is happening so how can we fix that well we can fix that going here into the content i'm going to right click and create a new folder i'm going to call it blueprints and in order for us to fix this, we need to create our own game mode. So we can right click over here and we can go and create a blueprint class. And from here we can pick a parent class because every single class or blueprint that we create, it needs to have a parent class. We can click on this game mode base. You see it defines the game being played, its rules, scoring and other faces. Basically that is the game mode, but this is the game mode base. And we can go over here where it says all classes, click on this drop down list. And in the search box, we can filter for game mode and we can select the game mode as you can see the game mode is a child of the game mode base and if you don't know the relationship of parent and child and what that is just go through my unreal engine c plus plus tutorial series because they are the same principles they talk about object oriented programming inheritance polymorphism and all of the good stuff if you want to finish this tutorial series, but don't want to wait every single day until I publish a video, you can access all the videos right now in my Game Development Academy. Link is down below. Just check it out. For a small monthly fee, you can access this tutorial, all future tutorials, plus 80 other courses where you can learn game development from. Click the link down below and check it out. So instead of us selecting the game mode base, we can select the game mode and I can click here game mode and I'm going to call this one BP underscore Unreal Platformer underscore game mode. And there you go. So now I can go here into the project settings and instead of this default game mode, that is the game mode base, I can select here BP Unreal Engine Platformer Game Mode. There you go. So automatically you see the difference over here. The difference is when I had the game mode, I could not edit any of these. So we have the default pawn, everything is default. I cannot click here to edit this, but when I select my Unreal Platformer Game Mode, I can select here and I can select a default pawn to be whatever I want it to be. I can also go here and select you see the player controller to be the you know player controller and all of the good stuff so you see my point and what is happening over here but still we don't have a player to select to be you know to be our player basically <laughs> so in order for us to do that what we are going to do is over here i'm going to right click 
and go blueprint class. And this time I'm going to select the character and then I'm going to say BP underscore game character. So game character. And there you go, voila. So I can go here inside of the project settings now and over here instead of the default pawn, I can select my B BP game character and he will be the one that is going to be spawned. So if I hit the play button and if I eject myself, you don't see that sphere that we had previously. As you can see, we don't have it, but still we cannot even move. I'm pressing the WASD key. We cannot move, we cannot do anything and all of that good stuff. So what or how can we, what we need to do in order to move? Well, we need to go and edit the first, we are going to edit the game character over here. So click on it. And when we open him, there you go. So this is going to be our game character. You see this capsule, we are not going to add any meshes to him. Basically over here, you see we have the mesh and over here you will put a 3D model. We currently don't have later on when we import the zombie model that is going to be our 3D model. So for example, we can use that or any other 3D character that you have. But since we don't have any of those inside of our game, Game currently then we cannot what we can do because this is a skeletal mesh we can create a static mesh over here and for the static mesh for example over here I can you know take this sphere and if I compile and save that and go over here hit the play button eject myself there you go now we have the sphere I can also do something like this instead of the sphere I don't know let's try this con there you go if I hit the play button and compile and save and go back over here and eject myself, now we are a con. So you can see that's how we can become any object that we want. It's like magic. But we're not going to do that with the static mesh, so I'm simply going to delete that component that we added. And what I'm going to do over here is I am going to add a camera. So over here I'm going to filter the camera. And there you go. So this is the camera and the camera because of the following. So the camera is going to follow the player. I'm simply going to make it a child and the location, the location X for the camera I'm going to set at 20, not 51. So it's 20 and the location on the Z axis is going to be 60 and there you go. So this is basically currently everything that we are going to do for our player because we still cannot move the player. We still cannot do any of those things. So yeah, there you go. Before we wrap this video up, I know you're sad. We're still not going to do anything. We're going to, you know, but still this is a long tutorial series. So yeah, I don't want to overwhelm you in every single lecture. And what we're going to do is we are going to go over here inside of the project settings. And over here, we're going to click on input. So input is under engine. You see over here, we have the engine. And then over here, we have input. So click on that input. And we are going to create some action mappings. So over here, the first action mapping that we are going to create. So click on the plus button here, adds an action mapping. So click now on the drop down list. And there we go. This is the action mapping. So this one I'm going to call jump. And basically over here, when we click on this, I'm going to filter for the space bar and there you go. So what the hell is this teacher? I'm confused. I, I want to, you know, beat you up. Listen, if you beat me up, you're going to go to jail. You cannot watch these videos from jail. Okay. So over here, this is the name of that action mapping. And in order for us to execute it, we need to press the space bar. So this is essentially what we are doing. As you can see, this is the name of the action mapping later on when we use that inside of our blueprints. We are going to see that. Don't worry about it. We will see it. So when we use it in the blueprints, we are going to call it as jump and it will be triggered when we press the space bar. And after that, we can, you know, execute whatever when we press the jump action mapping, which in this case is the space bar. Of course, you can, you know, put it whatever you can click on this plus button to add another action mapping. And from here, for example, you can click on the key code A, for example, or, or I don't know, key code whatever. And here you have, as you can see, different options for different, for different platforms. Here you have the gestures to pinch, rotate, and so on and so forth. For PC4, touchpad, button accents, you get the point. Xbox One, there you go. Global menu, view, pause, blah, 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 blah. Android over here, as you can see. You see, it, for different for different options or for different platforms, you have different options that you can select. That when that is pressed, for example, spacebar is pressed on the keyboard, then we will execute this one. So I'm going to remove this, and when I say this one, I mean the jump 
action mappings. So now we're going to go into the axes mappings and over here we are going to create the rotation why because we are going to rotate with our mouse and over here i am going to filter for the mouse y there you go over here i'm going to set the scale to be minus one don't worry starting from the next video when we code the movement and everything i'm going to explain why we set minus one and what that is so next we are going to have the rotation X. So over here, rotation X. And for the rotation X, we are going to select the mouse X. And for this one, we are not going to say minus one over here. Again, don't worry, we will, you know, talk about this. I'm going to create two more axis mappings. And this one is going to be move forward. And this one over here is going to be move right. Now for us to move forward, we are going to do that by pressing the W key. And we're going to do that by pressing the S key key so going back over here of course for the s key because backwards is the negative one i'm going to say minus over here for the value because this is the coordinate system you have x you have y and you have z there you go there you go there you go so this is x this is over here y and this is over here the z and z can go over here so forward is the positive on the Z, upwards is the positive on the Y, and right is the positive on the X. On the left is the negative on the X, downwards is negative on the Y, and backwards is negative on the Z. So that's why if we want to move backwards, we are going to use here minus one. Next, I am also going to attach over here or add two more axis mappings. One is going to be the up arrow, so it's up, how am I calling this one? Actually, simply up, not the up arrow. There you go, so up. And this one is going to be down. And of course, for the down, we are also going to say minus. This will allow us to move forward with W and S or up or down arrow key on our keyboard. And we're going to do the same thing here for the move right. So over here, we're going to have the key code A. So when we press the key code A on our keyboard, we're going to move to the left side, which is the negative side. So there you go. When we press here the key code D, you see we're going to go to the right side, which is the positive side. So the scale here is going to be one. And over here, when we press the left arrow, so simply filter for the left, there you go. We are going to go to the left side, so minus over here. And when we press over here right, then we are going to go to the right side on the X. So we have everything prepared and starting from the next video, we're going to code everything. If something was not clear in this video, make sure that you ask, because if you don't ask, you will never know. I will never show. And uh, yep, I will see you guys in the next video.